Thomas Loveland. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Stephen's in Sierra Vista and our Sunday morning worship. I'm the Reverend Allison Cornell. For those of you joining us online, we're glad to have you. Um, we do have a couple of announcements before we begin this morning. Um, the first is that there's a sign-up sheet in the back for the Easter brunch. If you would like to sign up to bring something, there's a place there for you to, to write your name in so that we uh, have some things covered for the Easter brunch. And uh, after the service, we'll move it into the parish hall in case uh, somebody doesn't have a chance to do it right now uh, while we're uh, having our service or at the end of the service. We'll make sure it's available for you afterwards. Um, the other announcement this morning that's important to tell you is that we're going to try and have communion at the rail this morning. So when you come forward for communion, you can stand or you can kneel and we have a gluten-free bread that we're using for everyone. And after the service, I would love to hear if you found it palatable. Because we've tried different ones in the past. We tried this one last night with the five o'clock service and they gave it its stamp of approval. So hopefully you will as well. And that way we can always have one bread and one cup instead of having separate bread for those that are gluten-free folks and, and others for regular folks, it will all be the same. So when you do come forward, I will give you the bread and Linnea will have the cup and we will ask you to gently dip, if you would like, your bread into the cup in the wine. If you are someone who prefers not to have the wine, you just take the bread, go ahead and eat it, and then you can go back to your seat. Um, and if you would prefer not to receive communion, you can always cross your arms and we will give you a blessing instead. So a uh, little bit different going back to the way things were incrementally. Uh, so we're going to have people on this side, you come to this rail and on this side, you come to this rail. If there's not a place right away, just wait for someone to finish taking communion and then take their spot. Any questions on that? Okay, good. We are still taking up a collection for Ukraine. Uh, again, the little square basket in the back, if you would like to make a, a cash donation, if you're going to write a check, just make sure you note that it's for Ukraine in the memo line. And uh, we're also taking up a collection for Dottie's Stoles for her becoming a deacon in June. So if you would like to make a donation to that, you can also put that in the basket. Um, a quick little note about some things that are coming up in the next week or so. Next Saturday, in the parish hall up here, we're going to have our ladies tea and making of Easter bonnets. And we have these little invitation cards that we ask you to take one with you if you've got a friend or a neighbor that you would like to invite to come with you to that, um, to, to give it to them so that they've got the information. Um, and uh, it's going to be kind of a fun, silly thing to do. I've got the hats and, and flowers and little butterfly things. So we're gonna decorate the hats and then on Easter Sunday, we're all going to wear our hats, nod, nod, including me, yes, to Easter for Easter bonnet. So uh, it's just going to be a fun thing next weekend on Saturday. Saturday evening worship will go on here as it normally does, but next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We will be at Sierra Lutheran Church on Lensner, and in your announcement sheet, the address is there. It's a 9 a.m. service. There will not be a worship service here on Sunday. Everybody will be over at Sierra Lutheran for their worship service there. That starts our Holy Week. And on Monday, Thursday, we're going up to Benson. And we will meet here in the parking lot. We're going to leave no later than 5 p.m. on Thursday. So if you want to carpool, you can get a ride with somebody here. We'll go up to Benson. That service starts at 6 and we'll come back down here and drop you back off at your car so you can go home afterwards. So that's on Thursday. So everybody, Sierra Lutheran, our church, we all go up to Benson. Then on Good Friday, we are hosting. So the other two churches will be joining us here on Good Friday at six o'clock in the evening. So um, please put that in your calendars. Make sure you remember for those special services when we are here and when we are not here. And we'll put signs up on the wall, on the doors just to remind folks that may not get that message. All right, um, and then Easter Sunday and Easter Vigil on Saturday night will be here. So we'll have Easter on uh, Easter Vigil on Saturday. Uh, that'll be at five at the usual time that we have our five o'clock Saturday service. 
and then Sunday Easter will be at 11 at our usual time uh, on Sunday for Easter Sunday. Any questions about that? Other announcements that I should be aware of this morning? All right then. Our opening song this morning is number 679, and Doreen is going to play through uh, one time for us, and then we'll start singing. So please stand as you are able and join us in singing hymn number 679. Conceal my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us, some escape us, some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. Amen. Amen. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. Let us sing together the Kyrie. Thank mm -hmm. Today. 
Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first lesson this morning is from the Old Testament, a reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me and jackals and the ostriches. For I give a water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I have formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in with me in reading Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the land. Those who sow with tears will reap the songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the sea, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second right reading is from the New Testament, from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness under the law, law blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through the faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press to on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, 
the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Our letter of Paul to the Philippians, in, in that he says, Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Today I want to talk a little bit about surrender, surrendering ourselves, our agendas, our own ways of things and how we think things ought to be done. The beginning of this letter that Paul writes, he is giving an account of himself as a Jew. He starts to list some of the things that are supposedly important to those who are Jewish. So he starts by saying that, you know, he is of the Jewish people, a Hebrew, uh, an Israelite, of the tribe of Benjamin. And he goes on to state that he was, you know, started his life right at the very beginning in accordance to the ways and the rites and the rituals that are prescribed by the Jewish law, circumcised on the eighth day. And then he tells a little bit about himself, how he is a Pharisee. That means that he is a studier of scripture. Now, in those days, scriptures didn't have chapters and verses, but if they did, he could quote chapter and verse all of the scriptures. He knew them inside and out. And he was zealous in uh, making sure that he himself, as well as others, held to those laws. And if he found out of anybody that was going against those laws, he would go get them and bring them before the religious courts and have them tried, punished for what they were doing or not doing according to the law. So he's presenting his, his authenticity as a Jew. He's presenting his bona fides, as we would say in the intel world, um, trying to prove uh, who he is and that he is an upstanding person, that he is in right with God. Uh, according to all the things that was supposedly part of how you were right with God. And he assures them that, you know, I've got God's stamp of approval. And then he goes on to say that those things that used to be important to him are no longer important. He says, that stuff, that that way that I was raised, the way I believe, the way that I've conducted myself, all of that stuff, rubbish garbage, worthless. I no longer hold to that anymore because he's found something better. He's found something that guides his life, gives it more faith, more fulfillment, more uh, a sense of, of, of closeness, of rightness with God, and that is that he was transformed. He was one way, all of this stuff that we're talking about beforehand, and then he had an opportunity presented to him to change, to become someone new. In our first lesson from Isaiah, we even have that kind of an indication in that lesson. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Now, most of us recall what that event was for Paul, right? He was on his way as a Pharisee, as a zealot, to go after some of these new Jesus followers up in Damascus, up in Syria, and bring them back to Jerusalem and have them presented to the court and punished. And as he's on his way, he gets struck down, blinded for three days, and Jesus speaks to Paul directly. And he says, Paul, what are you doing? And he says, who are you? He says, I'm the Lord, the one you're persecuting. Oops. <laughs> now, we don't get much more information about what exactly Jesus says to Paul, but for three days while he's blinded, I imagine that maybe the good Lord is showing Paul, this is the way you were. Here's the way that I would prefer you to be. 
here is what I would rather you be doing with your life. Here's the way I would rather you be treating people. And like I said, we don't get that, but you know, shortly after he's relieved of his blindness, he gets on board with all the other believers. He becomes a Jewish, a uh, Jesus follower. Um, and so there's a whole turnaround, a whole transformation of his life that happens. And in order for that to happen, Paul has to let go of that past. He says, all that stuff, that is worthless. That doesn't define who I am anymore. I surrendered my agenda, my person, my beliefs, my ways of doing things in favor of the way Jesus teaches how we are to be. I take on what he has as faith in God and how we are supposed to be as people of God. Now, we're not really talking here about comparing apples and oranges, past life to present life. We're really talking more like apples and banquets. Because what you had before was very simple, and what you're being offered is so much more, so much richer, so much deeper. It's not just, you know, a, 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 a simple switch. It, it is a profound and to the core of one's being kind of change. In Paul's former life, he was what we would call someone who was very legalistic. Everything was black and white, right and wrong. No room for gray area, right? Also, no room for mercy, compassion, sympathy. And when he makes this big change, when he learns from his uh, revelation from Christ and from studying then with the other disciples this new way of being, he finds that he has to surrender everything to become a different person. And this is what we pray when we pray the Lord's Prayer. When we say, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it's already being done in heaven. The way things already are in God's kingdom up in heaven, that's what we want to happen in our lives when we pray that. I want your kingdom, God. I want your will to be what rules my life. Now in 12-step spirituality, the third of the 12 steps actually puts this into very good words. It says, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, Son of God, fully divine and fully human, and he made it his life's goal to do what God the Father asks him to do, to follow God's agenda for his life. He could have done other things. He could have as we're getting to the end of his life, it says it's six days before the Passover when we get to that part of our gospel lesson, which means we're roughly six, seven days out from when he's going to be crucified. And he knows this, he knows what's coming. He could have turned aside. He could have decided not to go to Jerusalem. He could have gone to a different town and just kept on living. He could have exerted his own will, his own agenda, and not done what God the Father has said. This is. This is what's coming for you. Instead, he says, no, I'm going to follow through. I'm going to go through with this. I'm going to see this to the end. And so our gospel lesson today finds him coming back in that direction. He, uh, he had an opportunity a few weeks back to raise Lazarus from the dead. And right after that, he leaves that area of Bethany and goes out into the country for a while. And now it's time. So he's coming back into town. And he is stopped at the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and they're having a dinner party for him. Now, I don't know, but I'm thinking, since this is probably the next time that Mary and Martha and Lazarus have had time with Jesus after Lazarus has been raised, that part of Mary's reaction is in thanksgiving for having saved their brother Lazarus, having raised him from the dead. And so we have this very intimate, very unabashed, unashamed devotion of Mary where she opens this perfume and puts it on Jesus' feet and then uses her long hair to brush it around his feet. 
And she does so in front of the whole crowd. She does this as a sign of devotion and adoration. I think at this point, she is firmly convinced, having seen someone raised from the dead, this guy is God. This guy is the Messiah. And I will show that I am all in, that I give my entire self to him through this act of washing his feet with this perfume. She has surrendered herself to God. Judas, on the other hand, not so much. Judas is still following his own agendas, right? He's one of the 12. He's one of the inner circle of Jesus, has been traveling around with Jesus now for a couple of years. He's heard Jesus preach. He's seen the miracles. He's probably convinced that, yeah, this guy is the Messiah, but he's thinking in terms of the more traditional idea of the Jewish Messiah who was going to be a warrior king going to overthrow the Romans, set us free from our oppressors, restore the kingdom of Israel to prominence and power. That's what Judas is looking for. And he keeps waiting, and Jesus isn't quite getting on the, on the, on the boat there with him and saying, you know, come on, let's do this. You know, so he's trying to force his own agenda. And part of his agenda is that he's also a little on the greedy side tells us in our reading today that he would take from the purse the stuff that was put in there. So when he sees this extravagant uh, expression of love and devotion, he goes, what are you doing? That's worth 300 denarii. We could have put that in the purse for the poor, and I could have helped myself to a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he's got his own agendas that he's still working. He's still not completely on board with what Jesus wants <laughs> everyone to understand and how everyone should be as a follower of God. And so we're going to know later that Judas's agendas continue when he tries to force Jesus into acting out against the police when they go into the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is not going to be forced. God is not going to be forced. But I wonder, how many of us are like Judas? And how many of us are like Mary? I'm guilty of being more like Judas. God, why don't you fix this? Why don't you fix? You're all powerful. You're all knowledgeable. Why don't you do this? Get over here and fix this. Get over here and fix that. My agenda on how I think God ought to be working in my life. Right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's the way I've been doing things. Not all the time. Sometimes I am Mary. Sometimes I have my complete devotion to God. But more often than not, it's like, wait a minute, you're all powerful. Why don't you fix this? Why don't you bring peace? Why don't you cure illness? Why don't you stop these things? Because I'm trying to get God to work on my agenda, work on my things that I think God ought to be doing. And then what happens when that doesn't happen? What's our reaction when God doesn't do what we want God to do according to our timetable and our agenda? Disappointment. Disappointment, yeah. Yeah. Frustrations, sure. Sure. Maybe he's not as powerful as we hope. Uh, yeah, yeah. We begin to question his powerfulness and knowledge and abilities, right? Maybe you're not all that. I don't know. Do we listen? Do we listen for a response from God about what we keep trying to force God to do? Does God have something that he can speak to us about? Are we willing to see things from God's perspective instead of our own perspective? Can we become willing to let go of our old selves and our old ways and our old agendas, the way Paul did? Can we surrender our pride, our egos, our full selves to allow God to make us into something new? I'm, I'm, I'm making something. Can you not perceive it? Can we allow that to happen? There 
are a couple of sayings in 12-step spirituality that speak to this a little bit. The first one says, I can't. God can. I think I'll let him. And the other is, let go and let God. Amen. Please join me in proclaiming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join with me in the prayers of the people. Blessed are you, eternal God, to be to praised and glorified forever. Heavenly Father, hear us as we pray for the unity of the church. May we all be one that the world may believe. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That the life of Christ may be revealed in us. We remember those who have died. Father, Father into your hands we commend them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into your eternal glory. May we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. Have compassion on those who suffer from sickness, grief, or trouble. In your presence may they find strength. Look with your kindness on our homes and families. Grant that your love may grow in our hearts. Make us alive to the needs of our community. Help us to share one another's joys and burdens. We honor and pray for our indigenous neighbors that we may dwell together in respectful harmony. Inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world. Guide us in all evil in the way of justice and peace. Strengthen all who minister in Christ's name. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Paul's Sudanese mission in Phoenix. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Nigeria. Give us the courage to proclaim your gospel. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High. Please stand as you are able. We continue on page 8 in your bulletins. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right, indeed, it is our joy and our salvation, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your son to share our human nature, who, though tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. Through your Christ, therefore, we may triumph over sin and grow in grace. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, in his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessings, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen.
have a birthday or anniversary this week? Yes. And? Uh, my mother is 75 today. 75? Happy birthday, Mom. Who else? Anybody else have? Yes. My nephew's birthday is on the 8th. Your nephew's birthday is on the 8th. Yep. What's nephew's name? Ethan will be turning one. Ooh. Ethan will be one. Oh, that's that's cool. wonderful. My granddaughter's birthday is the 4th, and my daughter's birthday is the 5th. For Taylor and Robin. For Taylor and Robin? And what's mom's name? Ginger. Ginger. So Taylor, Robin, Ginger. Yes, May? I have a great granddaughter who's going to be 12 on the 5th of April. Okay, and what's great granddaughter's name? Anastasia. Anastasia. Wow, we got a lot of April birthdays here at the beginning of the month. Well, I think we're going to have to, one, sing happy birthday, and two, we'll do the birthday prayer for sure. So, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to all of these we just mentioned. Happy birthday to you. And if you'll get out your cards, we'll do the birthday prayer. Everybody raise your right hands and let us say together, O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Anniversaries? Special healing prayers. Well, I'm grateful that we've got Sandy back with us, but she still has a few more things that she has to have done. So uh, continue to keep Sandy in prayer for Mark and his ankle ongoing. Uh, others that we should lift up in prayer today. All those Ukrainians that are suffering because of the war. All right, let us say the healing prayer together. Raise your right hands. Oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the health of your power, that sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Anybody traveling? My son Hunter is in Boston for work today. Okay, so Hunter, anybody else? Yes? Yeah. My daughter in law is going from Germany to Belgium today. From Germany to Belgium. Okay, so for Beth, who else? All right, yes? Uh, same mom. Ginger and my aunt Susan are same traveling mom. all the way to. Okay, so a trip to Wisconsin as well. So let us raise our right hands and, and bless those that are traveling. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, gratitudes. What are we grateful for? Answers to prayer? Blessings? Yes, Alice. I'm grateful that we made it back from Scottsdale on Friday. Yes, that trip up to Phoenix is always harrowing for the traffic that's up there that we don't have to deal with. So yeah, grateful that you're back and working closer to some solutions, we hope, uh, on getting things back to normal for Sandy. Other great, grateful gratitudes. Answers to prayer. Okay, then. I'm grateful we had some rain last week. We had about a quarter inch at our house. Um, let us turn then to our post-communion prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. People of St. Stephen's, what does God call us to do? We are called to love and serve. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. And our closing song is on the back of your announcements page. It is an insert. I surrender all. Amen.